Alright guys, so this is where we are going to talk about Lab 9 temporarily. Lab 9 is um, the, uh, determining the Ka and Kb for weak acids and weak bases. And so really this is taking advantage of the relationship between Ka, Kb, pH, and pOH and just really um, getting you guys comfortable with taking and using those equations as you need them. And so if we kind of consider, let's go down here, we can usually tell if something is an acid or a base by whether it is going to donate or accept um, protons, whether it's going to accept or donate hydrogens, and any number of other things. So for example, if we had, you know, sulfuric acid, we can talk about how that dissociates in water to give the hydronium ion oops and the H oops SO4 ion there we go and we can tell just by basically um, looking ha 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 this is donating a proton, so this is our acid. Because in this equation, water is accepting a proton over here. It does not have an extra hydrogen over here. It does. We can say that this, in this equation, is acting as our base. In order to find your conjugate, your conjugate has the same root of the compound. Uh, it's just, you know, plus or minus the proton, plus or minus the electrons, whatever's transferring here. And so because this is our acid over here, this is our conjugate base. And so it's kind of nice to have this just in terms of thinking because we know that if we were going to do the reverse reaction, uh, going in the reverse direction. In order for this to look like the original, it would have to steal a proton, so it would have to act as a base to get that back. Meanwhile, this has an extra hydrogen on this side than the other, so this is the conjugate acid of water, because on this side it has a um, extra hydrogen. You know, it's going to donate it back to look like water, okay? So let's go ahead and move into what the data is going to look like. So as we look at this reaction, uh, this e experiment, I guess would be a good way to put it, we have a few things happening, okay? Um, we have a, a series of solutions. So you're going to have four to six bottles over in the hood, and you're going to take the, the pH meter, and you're just going to measure the... Uh, pH of those solutions. And so we're going to have two vials of acetic acid, 0.1 molar and then 0 0.01 molar. And it's going to be interesting because what you're going to find out is the um, different concentrations are going to dissociate at different ratios. Okay? And so, but that's for then. Let's go ahead and talk about how to calculate these. So let me see if I can kind of do this. We're going to put it over here. Um, I'm going to write my answers here, but show my equations over here just for, I don't know, prettiness. So for pH of this guy, where'd it go? There it is. The last time I did this, and I'm not saying the pH meters were good. I'm not saying they were bad. It was before we got the new ones though, so you know, take that with a grain of salt. Um, for the 0.1 molar, I got a reading of 2.87 pH. Over here, for the 0 0.01 molar, I have 3.37. And so, um, and then coming down here, I'm only going to do one of these. Oops, I'm going to do the 0.1 molar. Um, 11.25 was my pH. So that's really all you have to do to collect your data is you're going to take your pH readings, you're going to go back to your desk, and you're going to work the problems. Okay? So I've got my pH readings. I'm going to come back and go through my equations. 
So if we look, the next thing from um, pH is the, hydro the hydronium ion concentration or hydrogen ion concentration. And we can see from the equation here, pH is equal to the negative log of this or the hydronium ion concentration. Just trying to make sure you guys can see where that is. And I'm going to do H plus rather than H3O plus just to save us a couple seconds. So here we know that we have, um, and I'm going to start here and go all the way down, 3.37 equals the negative log of the H plus concentration. There we go. First thing you're going to do is you're going to either divide or multiply by a negative one. Hmm. So that's going to give us negative 3.37 equals the log of your H plus concentration. Now your anti-log or second log um, button, depending on the calculator you have, it's going to look like a 10 to the X or a 10 to the caret. It just depends on the calculator you have. It doesn't really matter. Um, so you take the anti-log of both sides. That's going to give you the H plus concentration or the um, hydronium ion concentration. So if I take 10, the anti-log negative to the negative 3.37, here I get something like 4. To seven, rounding for sig figs times ten to the negative four. Okay. Mm, is it this one? It is. Yay me. Now, if you are kind of thinking back to acetic acid. I think we originally wrote it like this um, back in chapter two because this is uh, one way that you can do it. 3O2. When this dissociates, whether you add a water here and make it go to, with hydronium or not, um, it's going to dissociate into H plus and the acetate ion. Oops. 3O2 negative. And then technically if you did it the other way um, that organic chemists really like, what you're going to have is plus water. going to hydronium and the acetate ion. It really doesn't matter to me. Um, I'm never going to question you of, oh, is the proton floating around by itself or is it actually associated with a water molecule? Technically it's always associated, but I don't know how many times I say it, chemists are lazy, so usually we're going to shorten it to this unless you're truly in organic chemistry. Um, okay, so that's our equation. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this for a second. We can tell because this is a one to one to one ratio that whatever hydronium or H I have, I'm going to have the same with this acetate ion. And so whatever I had here is equal to the one above it. Oops. Oops, negative four. Um, and if you really want to do it the right way, molar H plus, oops, control Z. We know every time we have one molar mole 
of H plus that dissociates. They're going to have one mole of uh, acetate. And so it just ends up being the same. Okay? So then it asks us for the original undissociated amount. Well, we know we had um, 0 0.01, this much dissociated, so we're really just looking for whatever is left. And so if you just subtract 0 0.01 minus, uh, point, well, let's go ahead and 4.27 E negative for. Make sure you're checking your calculator, guys, because what's going to happen is um, if you aren't careful, you're going to subtract point, point 0.01 minus point zero zero four times 10 to the minus 4. You're going to get a really weird answer. So make sure when you're doing this, um, you are just being careful that you're, you're being smarter than your calculator with order of operations. So I get 0 0.009573 for my version, or 9.5, mm, when you subtract how many sig figs do you go to? Uh, it's 1, 2, it goes all the way out. So this goes 0 0.0100. Minus point zero 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 four two. So it's still going to be to this one. So it's just going to be nine point six. To the negative three. Okay, for Ka, Ka is always going to be products over reactants. Well, we have our concentrations here. So if I come up here, where is my value? We'll do this one. We have all of the concentrations. We have the concentration of um, our two products. We have the concentration of our reactant. So we can just plug this in. Um, already. Mm. Again, make sure you are being smarter than your calculator here. 9.6 times 10 to the negative 3. So when I enter this in my calculator, 4.27 e to the negative 4, parentheses squared, divided by 9.6 e to the negative 3. That looks good to me. I get something like 1 point, because of sig figs, I'm going to round to 2, 1.9, I really get 1.899 1 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay. That is exactly how you're going to do these calculations. Okay. And so I'm going to kind of go through them a little bit faster this time. Um, here, it's just about relating those um, equations on your equation sheet. Okay. So if we have the 2.87 as our pH pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. To get rid of that, you're going to divide both sides by a negative 1. Now you have negative 2.87 equals log of this guy. 
you take the anti-log of both sides and now you're going to get anti-log negative 2.87 oh, actually you get 1.3 rounding 5 to the negative 3 Because there's a one-to-one -one ratio, every time one hydrogen comes off, you get one acetate ion. This is going to be the same for right there. Oops, that should be a three, not a five. Sorry, should make it bigger. Um, to find the undissociated concentration, we're just going to have the original minus this. So it's 0.1 minus 00135. So again, we're going to end up with, um, because of how it is when we subtract, we're going to end up with the two sig figs. And it's going to be 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative 2. To find our Ka values, we have all of this already. So we're just going to enter those into our equation. There we go products over reactants, you enter this hmm. so 1.35 times 10 to the negative 3 squared divided by point zero Again, because of rounding, I'm going to end up going to 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, technically, guys, K is a constant. So these values should be the same. Um, just basing off a pH meter that isn't calibrated to, you know, 5 to 7 sig figs, though, and then the rounding that we're doing, that's pretty good. Um, what you can see is that the weaker the concentration, the more of it dissociates. Here we lost about 4%, here we only lost about 1%. Um, so all things considered, that's really not too bad. So let's go down and talk about base for a second. Oops, I did this one. Now we're going to do essentially the same thing, but we're going to be relating it to um, KB. So here we have ammonia. NH3 that will react with water. When this dissociates, it's going to take a proton from water to form the ammonium ion and a hydroxide ion. Okay? So if we look at this, we've got pH. We know from our equations, uh, where'd it go? Eh, whatever, it's on here somewhere. Um, pH plus pOH equals 14. And sometimes we'll write 0, 0. It doesn't really matter. Um, this 14 is supposed to be exact uh, because we go to two decimal places here just because that's what the pH meter can read to. Um, just kind of remember that this is going to go to at least the same number there. So we're going to plug in what we know. pH plus 11.25 equals 14. We're going to subtract that 11.25 from both sides and pH is equal to, double check, 
2.75. Oops. Now, just like hydrogen was related to the pH, pOH is related to the p uh, to the hydroxide ion concentration. So because we have this value already, we know that the pOH is 2.75. Now guys, you can do this um, any way you want. There's more than one way to go from here to here. You could do the pH to the H plus concentration and then go here. But because of the errors associated, just trust me that you kind of want to follow the equations that we tell you to use. Um, so that you don't round outside of that. So go ahead and use this pH, uh, I mean sorry, this equation for how to go from pOH to hydro hydroxide just so that you're going to be within the same error that the programming is going to accept um, on your pre-lab quiz. Okay? So uh, negative log To get rid of that, we're going to divide both sides or multiply both sides by a negative 1. That gives us negative 2.75 equals a positive log of the hydroxide ion concentration. We're going to take the anti-log of both sides. That's going to give us 10 to the negative 2.75 equals the hydroxide ion concentration. Um, which is negative log two point seven oops negative one point seven eight times ten to the negative three. Okay. Again, in this equation, everything is a one-to-one -one ratio. All of my coefficients are one. So because I have one mole of this dissociating, I can have one mole of this dissociating. So it's really just the same. The concentration of ammonia, just like before, you're going to take the original minus whatever actually dissociated. Um, Zero point one zero zero molar minus the dissociated I end up getting zero point zero nine eight um, and that's all we can do because of subtraction. Sig figs um, it's really only to this value, so two sig figs. 9.8 times 10 to the negative 2. Kb, very similar to Ka. It's going to be products over reactants. Water's not included because it's a liquid. Liquids and solids are not included in our K equation. Um, we have these values already. We have the 1.78 times 10 to the negative 3. Mm, there. Do it that way. And so then you can enter your values into the calculator. Again, be careful that you are um, being smarter than your calculator. 1.78 
e to the negative 3, close my parentheses, squared, divided by 0 0.098. I end up getting here 3.2 times 10 to the negative 5. Oops. <laughs> I don't think it likes me doing superscripts that way. But we'll do it that way. Um, so because it's 3.23, so yeah, 3.2 times 10 to the negative 3. Negative 5. Negative 5. There we go. So when you look at how these equations work, that took us longer to do the calculation than it's going to take you to do the data, but it's just related. It's the same four equations the whole time. Okay? So if I go look at our pre-lab quiz, you're going to find the same thing. You have a 7 molar solution, pH of this, what's the Ka? Hmm. I want it. Oh, okay. You guys kind of know from lecture if you have HA, it's always going to dissociate to give H plus. And A minus. There's more than one way to do this, but you have pH. That's exactly what you're, we do in lab. So you can take your pH value and go to the H plus concentration. Your H plus concentration, because it's a one to one ratio, it's a monoprotic acid, is going to equal your A minus concentration. Your HA concentration, it's going to be whatever you had originally, which is this 0 0.07, minus whatever dissociates. Dis mm, well, we'll go with that. And then you're going to plug in your Ka. To find your value. And it's going to be the exact same steps that you're going to do in the lab. So here we have pH equals the pH here they tell you is 3.79. Get rid of your negative one. Negative 3.79 equals positive log of H plus. You're going to take the anti-log of both sides. Um, and I don't know, I can't do that in my head. Negative 3.79. I need something like 1.762 times 10 to the negative 4. going to be the same for the other guy, the other ion. And originally we had 0 0.07. We lost the 0 0.123162. And I'm only doing it this way to show you kind of the sig figs that you're going to have left. You can kind of see it's going to go to the 
really to the fourth, but um, one, two, three, four. So it's going to go here. So it's going to be one zero zero minus second answer zero point zero six nine eight is how it rounds so we end up getting something like six point nine eight times ten to the negative three so now you have all three concentrations and you can kinda just plug this in Oops, what should that be to the negative four? Should be to the negative four. Good catch, good catch. There we go. 1.62 times 10 to the minus four. This guy to the negative three. That looks okay. Um, okay, 1.62. E negative four times parentheses 1.62 e to the negative 4 divided by the 6.98 e to the negative 3. And you can either enter it one way or another, but I end up getting 3.7, I guess rounding 6 times 10 to the negative 6. Something like that. Okay? If you go to the next one, yeah, we're fine. Mm, I'm not going to do concept question. Oops, am I in, am I in 10? That was weird. Okay. It looks right. Lab 9. This one's lab 9. There we go. Here you have 7.52 molar base solution. pH is this. Determine the KB. It's exactly how we just did it on our worksheet. Where did our worksheet go? You have the concentration, you have the pH, you're going to use the pH to find the pOH, the o pOH to find your hydroxide. There's just a one-to-one -one ratio, so it's going to be the same here. Your base concentration is the original minus whatever dissociates for here, and then you're going to plug it in to get your KB it's exactly the same. Here you're just trying to determine is this an acid or a base. You can usually tell here it accepted one so this must have donated one. Um, so this would be for this version an acid and this would be my conjugate. Oops, base. Similarly this is accepting a proton so it's my base. This is going to be my conjugate acid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to answer that. And then this looks just like your data. You're going from pH to hydroxide or hydronium, I mean H plus or hydronium ion concentration. This is going to be the same for here because it's a one to one ratio. This is just this minus whatever dissociated and you plug it in for your Ka. Okay. Um, the only other difference here is when you go from pH to pOH, 
it's just 14 minus this. Do not use scientific notation here. Um, I don't know if it'll accept it or not, but it says not to do it. From pOH, you can go to the hydro hydroxide concentration and then to your Kb. It's exactly the same as what we just did. Nope. Hmm. 